Jones in It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Indiana Jones. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the show where normally we discuss the Indiana Jones films one minute at a time. But now in this festive time of the year, we are here to discuss one of Pete's 20 favorite holidays, Thanksgiving (laughs) via the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving special. Is that even the name of it? Or is it Thanksgiving Charlie Brown? Or what is it? What's it actually called? I yeah, know. I don't know actually, I, but I, I do. I do. I, can I just <laughs> mention that I, I, everyone knows I don't like holidays. Thanksgiving mm-hmm. has always been like the absolute lowest of the low for me. This is the. <laughs> I get that. I, yeah, I, mean, I like it, but I, whatever I, the opposite yeah. of a pinnacle is, this is it. If you're not looking for family gatherings, period, then Thanksgiving is like, oh, it's not even like I don't even get presents or anything. There's like nothing. <laughs> there's no extra fun stuff in it for me. It's just like I have to sit around a table with people and talk to them or not. Well, I had I had childhood trauma around Ugh. it too, which is I makes it like even it. more fun. Yeah. Well, let, we I don't, don't like need to talk about it. Let's talk about the childhood trauma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you ever get to kick the football? <laughs> see, that's what you don't do in my family is talk about the childhood trauma. So oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you, kind of you, you always ask why I'm emotionally distant. There are lots of reasons around Thanksgiving. <laughs> Oh man, I don't like talking <laughs> Sorry, about the holidays. I interrupted with Pete, your beautiful, your beautiful introduction. Please, please go on. I think I'm done. I love I it know. because it's, you know what I love about it? It's real. It is. It's real. It's what it's like. It's like you know. Sometimes we talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark and all. Yeah. It's like all this fiction, fantasy stuff, mm-hmm. and then the the lens pulls over, and it's like it's like you know the telescope. You ever see like the telescope? <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm looking at the moon or something. And then all of a sudden, you move it a little bit, and the telescope's looking at like a billboard for like a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like talking about the holidays with Pete. I love. I it. just want Pete to be. Ha- I don't mind real. I just. I just wish it wasn't real sad. <laughs> Thank you. I want Tom. Pete to be having a Thank nice you. time. God damn it. Thank you. Well, then you know, I'm going to jump way ahead. There's a line towards the end where Marcy <laughs> says something about we we should just be happy that we're here together. And I am very yeah. happy that I'm here with the two of you. Ah, oh, there you go. I'm See? very happy about that. I'm thankful and grateful for that every day. That Me too. Fun. That's nice. Um, but yeah, your boy Pete, you mentioned like I don't know a week ago or something. You know, oh hey, maybe we should do the uh, the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. I'm like, shut up, Pete. We already did the Thanksgiving special, you <laughs> dumb idiot. And you're like, no, we didn't. I'm like, uh, and I looked it up. I'm like, oh my god, we never did the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving mm. special because we, we did the Halloween. New, the New Year's one either. There's a New Year's one. I didn't even know no. that. One. That might be a newer one. I don't know. In my, I mean, in my heart, there's only the Christmas one, the Halloween one, and this one. Yeah. And and. Uh, and also, actually, there's also the movie uh, A Boy Named Charlie Brown, which is really good. But um, this one, I'm, I'm going to say something controversial, maybe. To me, this one has the best music. Oh, my gosh. That could be true. No, wait a minute. I don't think that is true. Really? It might not be true. No. Well, I, I'm, I'm like that early 70s funk guy. This this leans sure. a little hev- more heavily into what's, that. What's weird about it for me is that, you know, I mean, obviously, like anybody who's gone to a Starbucks or anything, they know that the Vince Guaraldi, the Christmas one, is like the one. Mm-hmm. And then this mm-hmm. is sort of like a twist on that. So I could see people like, you know, bristling against that a little bit, which little I did, more, honestly. But it is more. actually, yeah. on its own, it's cool. On its like. Without oh, comparing it. it to anything else, it's cool. And you got the Fender Roads, and the, it's it's it gorgeous. does. You were, it kind of it was like do 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 do. It's do, super do, like nineteen seventy three, like a little do, bit funky. Do. Little, it's great. Yeah, I you know watching this, I had no idea that when this came out, and I was and uh, you know I get about halfway through it, and there's like some of those I don't know what you call them, like the Snoopy interlude. And there's mm-hmm. a one, is it Vince Guaraldi singing? He is. He's singing a little birdie. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's him singing. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and I was like, this has got to be like one of the last ones they did. Or <laughs> or the later ones. This just oh, it's has definitely, all yeah. The feels, yeah. Yeah. It's, it doesn't feel like the the other ones. And then I was, you know, I look, it's 1973. And uh, which isn't that crazy late? I mean, this no, was a bunch of no. these things. I this was a tumultuous I, time in America when this came out. 
<laughs> tomboys were taking over the world. It was crazy. <laughs> that is a weird thing I know because like Peppermint Patty's there and like I, and I had a I, I wrote a stupid note in my thing who came first Peppermint Patty or Jodie Foster from Freaky Friday and I was like wait a minute there was there was like Jodie Foster and there was like Tatum O'Neill and uh, Bad News Bears and there was like I don't th- three wait does three make a uh, a trend I forget <laughs> what's the uh, <laughs> does that count as like a oh yeah but it, it, it seemed like there was like a tomboy thing in the seventies uh-huh. like there were yeah. you, you didn't have to look far to find uh, a strong tomboy character Joe on Facts of Life yeah yeah I mean that wow. was the eighties but still yeah what did that start in the eighties I couldn't remember if it started in the late seventies I guess it was eighties huh? I feel like it had to be eighties because Mrs Garrett had to ditch uh, different strokes mm. to get over there mm. oh wow but yeah. But no, that's a good one. Wait, 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 wait. Do it, Tommy. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Natalie! <laughs> <laughs> this is Garrett. I was almost home. <laughs> <laughs> I do that to my sister and she'll that cry. That my favorite moment on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Oh, my God. Now we're, uh, having we're having fun. <laughs> anyway, Charlie Brown. I looked it yeah, up. Charlie Brown never kicks the football. Never. In the I, entire I like run. that this kind of this starts right off. Classic Thanksgiving bait and switch. It's like you get it right from the <laughs> right from the outside. You know what you know what you're getting. You're yeah. getting Thanksgiving. Oh, holiday fun, family to oh. Oh. Genocide. Oh. <laughs> I did you know, I did have a, a a question for you, Pete. What is the proverbial football in your life? And <laughs> My life and yeah, in your life. And no, my who, life is yeah. the proverbial oh, your football. Li- in my life. <laughs> <laughs> your life. Who thinks that you're the stupidest person alive? <laughs> How? I, I want to like know. There should be a time limit on this podcast. Yeah, that's really. going to take a long time to go through Wait. everybody. <laughs> Just use initials. <laughs> well, yeah, because you know you walk around your day and they're like, "Oh, here I am going up an escalator at the mall." Are you like, oh, here I am, and I'm unwrapping my burrito. And you're like, there's somewhere out there that somebody thinks Pete is the stupidest person alive. Pete I feel like How the I better am. people, the better people know me, the more they think that of me. Oh, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> That's what Charlie Brown says. Like Lucy invites him to kick the football. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. classic, right? And and he says she must think I'm the stupidest person alive. And then less Pete- than ten seconds later. He's like, yeah. oh, I think I should probably kick this ball. I'm not yeah, it, it uses surprising, like the language in this kind of took me aback a little. Like he says, I might, I'm, I will fall on my back and kill myself. Mm-hmm. And like that's yeah. like he wouldn't say that today. Like it, it's pretty. He he says pretty heavy. I'll fall stuff on my back his... and die by suicide. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's interesting because she gives him that little speech about tradition, and he's interestingly enough mesmerized mm-hmm. by this thought of tradition and so you know it got me thinking like okay how important is tradition or is it uh you know is it sort of the bane of our existence like mm-hmm. does it does it hold us back or does it bind mm-hmm. us together tradition i guess sing the song <laughs> <laughs> i mean it depends you can you know it's it's a it's it's a nice thing to uh it's a nice sort of like i don't know rung on the ladder or something of your year or something mm-hmm. but if you want to skip it or it doesn't work for you you should be able to be like yeah no i don't want to go over here no i don't need that i don't need uh you know i don't have to go to church on this day or i don't have to travel for this or but i do want to do this you know like i uh, like you know i have friends who um they don't go see their family at thanksgiving they like get together with their friends in the area because like nobody wants to travel and stuff and so you know like just like an an example of like turning a tradition into something sort of non-traditional but that's a new tradition and devo has a record called new traditionalists (laughs) and that sort of thing but the holiday was begun as a like it it was literally a piece of propaganda. Mm-hmm. Like Thanksgiving, it was a was Lincoln instituted as a as a propaganda means of bringing some unity to people. And yeah. they tried they kind of they tried to build in this tradition, and it it took like it it took it was built on some sort of monstrous mis assertions, but it took. Yeah, but you know, that's, I mean that's part part of the thing with traditions is like 
like yes like you know you can do it's absolutely fair to complain about you know like the, this is like celebrating you know us stealing this entire country from other people and stuff who lived here yes we gave them a turkey but then we took their entire life <laughs> um but you know I'm, I'm not celebrating that when i celebrate things when i go home i'm going home to like see my family and have food and stuff and have a yeah, nice time and yeah. everything or like at christmas i'm not necessarily celebrating the same thing that everybody else is celebrating at christmas i'm sort of like there for the Rampant secular traditions and everything rampant consumerism gimme 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 i want all my <laughs> stuff um <laughs> But yeah, it's like you 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 make the tradition, you celebrate it in the way that makes sense to you and what it means to you. But I feel like maybe maybe you guys had it different. But as a kid in public school in the seventies and eighties, I feel like Thanksgiving was definitely a propaganda message every year at school. Oh like yeah, it was learned, huge. Yeah, 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 and it was it was sort of like we're we're gonna drill manifest destiny into all the kids <laughs> and like you know yeah. You, it, it's it's interesting like it, it it was started as propaganda and it is perpetuated as that but it i'm, feels I'm like curious like in the 70s that could they could they i'm not surprised they thought they could get away with that in the 70s because yeah. it seemed like you know you know you can have an italian guy playing a crying indian over the garbage <laughs> ad and stuff you know like like it, it the, there wasn't there weren't anybody most people weren't pointing yeah. out like on every street corner that that yeah this is not uh, what we should be celebrating and stuff well, I mean, what's interesting is when we think about traditions, whether it's like uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, and you're like, okay, we all get together, and uh, as you said, it, it, I don't know, there's the, it, it marks either the passage of time, or um, you know, it gives you a chance to get together, or you're supposed to pause whatever it is you're doing in your non-holiday life, and be present with. Mm -hmm. Whatever that means, you get time off, or you have your mm -hmm. family around you, your friends, or you're celebrating food, and you're like, and at the same time, um, you know, it's no secret that the holidays is like one of the most anxiety-ridden times. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay, so which of this is sort of more important in our in our culture? You know, you, you mm -hmm. hear people say like, oh, I just wish I could skip the entire holidays. You know, and. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a stressed out. And you're like, okay, well, so that's one thing. But over here, when we do talk about traditions, you know, whether it be, you know, in your family or among your friends or as a country, mm -hmm. you know, you celebrate the uh, 4th of July, whatever it is, or even a larger thing, like uh, it's your religion. Uh, you know, they, they make, they really hang, they, 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 imbue these periods or days festivals with a tremendous amount of importance mm -hmm. that's one thing i've uh, for me have, have, has always been difficult about holidays is that it's especially this time of year holidays like between now and you know the start of the new year you're supposed to feel a certain way because it's the magical time of the year <laughs> and you have to like you you're you're expected to feel certain ways right and when you right. don't there's something wrong with you yeah even though it's, and that's what every the vast Christmas majority of people don't naturally feel super awesome mm -hmm. all at the same time just because you know like people who might criticize others for not loving christmas or not having a great time on christmas they're probably in the minority for if if they're having a fantastic time every single december 25th you know <laughs> it's like that pressure to like oh i broke my ankle on christmas can you believe that oh no like it always sucks to break your ankle but somehow if you do it on christmas it's worse and by the way i love christmas i don't like thanksgiving very well, much no, is that that's the thing it's like there's 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 a strong cultural current mm -hmm. of the holidays go 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 rah 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 move 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 and you're like this is fun but then there's this almost like some, you know, maybe some people call it like a toxic positivity. Mm -hmm. If you believe in that, yeah. like you're supposed to be happy. And I want, I sort of want to know which one of those is more important. I would ask the listeners crusade, yeah. you know, weigh in how, how important is how, you know, the way you feel around the holidays. Uh, by the way, I don't hate the holidays. Right. I love the holidays. No, I'm, I, I'm they, in a big minority and hate. They, holidays. they, <laughs> I'll hate them for you, Pete. I mean, I, I understand <laughs> why there's a lot more movement, especially as a guy who owns a business. It's like, sure, uh, I'm expected to do a lot more work and a lot more orders, and i got to cater to more customers, and all that's part of the commercialism of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't mean I don't enjoy the time. 
but I do wonder which one of those currents is stronger. What's weird mm-hmm. is like the there's a natural. It makes sense that there's a, and it sounds like a, a nice positive thing. There's like a communal sense mm-hmm. around the time, like oh, everyone's going to parties, everyone's getting together, everyone's like you know having you know pumpkin spice lattes. You know, we're all there's like these traditional things that are going on. You have to get you're, you're sitting at home by yourself, and you kind of have a sense these things are going on around you. It's a time of year. But somehow that gets cranked up to this is the best time of the year, and if I'm not having fun, I'm some sort of mm. failure, and everyone's going to think I'm weird. Every single person on Earth is having fun except for you. Exactly, yeah. When yeah. really, you know, all you really, all it really is, is like tiny little pockets of a few friends getting together and having nice times. Mm-hmm. And if you just, and if you can find one of those, you're good, and you're having a good Christmas, maybe. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, it, it, but it seems like, yeah, like the, somehow the communal sense of uh, togetherness gets cranked up into a, if you don't goddamn have a fantastic time <laughs> right the hell now, <laughs> I'm going to bust your face open. Well, that's every Christmas movie says has that message. Yeah. Like you're broken if you don't, if you don't recognize <laughs> the magic of tr- the transformative magic of Christmas. But yeah. here's what's so fascinating on this Charlie Brown Thanksgiving movie special whatever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in 1973 we need marcy to intercept everything that's going on and prove this exact oh, point that. yeah yeah, yeah. We're, so so here it is 50 some years later <laughs> and we're still talking about this so obviously yeah. you know charles schultz was like we have this problem and and he did that yeah. with the you know at the very end remember the Christmas one the the crappy ass Christmas tree and mm-hmm. you know yeah. mm-hmm. that he gives the big speech Linus gives the big speech about the message and meaning of Christmas it's like he's they're always doing that because yeah. even fifty sixty years ago I guess they thought the the message of what this was about is totally lost on Americans or the world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's also interesting the whole setup for this one. It, I'm, I'll say right away. I'm, I'm not crazy about this one. This one's as I was watching it for this. I, like I was this like, because it's so, it's, it's a dark one. It's good. It's, it's dark, but it's also super, super light. There's about five yeah, like, minutes yeah, of like, actual stuff going on in the entire 25 minute thing, <laughs> and there's a lot of Snoopy bouncing around and stuff, yeah. which is fine. You know, as a kid, you're probably loving it and stuff, but you know, like the Christmas one is is wall to wall pathos and and kicking you in the nuts and and thinking yeah. about it and stuff and it's funny it's actually legitimately funny and cool and charming but this one yeah it's got a lot of dead air and stuff but yeah it is interesting that like the whole impetus for the story yes pat pepper and patty's being obnoxious and inviting herself over but there's like three people who have nowhere to go on thanksgiving and they're like they're 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 searching for that communal thing. They know that they have to go somewhere for Thanksgiving, and they f- mm. they find it, and they make it happen. And Peppermint Patty's a jerk about it, and she complains about it. But it actually does happen, and that's actually kind of fantastic. Mm. Well, how? So none of them have a grandmother. I get. Well, I don't like know. it. Sounded no. It sounded like uh, Franklin had an opportunity to have plans. He just said he, he thought his parents would let him go because all oh, that's right. Patty talked up. Priscilla talked up what a great party this was going to be. <laughs> right, right, it's right. It's actually kind of amazing, especially right now as everybody's talking about this, like kind of half joking about it, about like, oh, my parents don't want me to come for Thanksgiving because of, you know, politics or something. Mm-hmm. It's like we've got like, Peppermint Patty's like corralled these like other kids from the other part of town. Like, <laughs> yeah. like there's the, there's the, there's the tomboy and there's the, there's the black kid and the, Either she, either she's a lesbian or she at least she's an intellectual like educated woman. She she brings all these kids to like this homeless Thanksgiving, you know, and brings them together and stuff. And it's like they they're the ones who don't have a place to go on Thanksgiving because they've been shunted from their family somehow. I'll cut part of that. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't. don't I got a lot. No, I've got it with you. <laughs> well, this starts in an interesting way. Like after we get the the classic bait and thanksgiving switch we get snoopy and woodstock walking in and snoopy has a gun and i it got me thinking <laughs> is thanksgiving the only holiday with a gun built into it oh wow oh the blunderbuss yeah yeah or the well, not, i mean not if you think about like a christmas story that was at the red rider rifle oh that's true yeah I guess like Memorial Day, but that's Day not like you know, yeah, well, like, like, like Fourth all of the... July they have fireworks. Which yeah, is supposed maybe to all of our holidays have guns built in. It's just interesting that the, the yeah. violence is is always been right there. Like it starts with <laughs> he's walking with a gun. That's that's what Thanksgiving's about. It's interesting, but we're so programmed to see it a certain way that we don't stop and yeah. think. 
Why is why is this dog carrying a gun for the for a holiday? Why is there a buckle on his head? What's going on? <laughs> I guess he's supposed to. Yeah, they're, they're shooting the turkey, which I always assume well, if I don't, you shoot. I, I, I don't think that's what the gun's for, but yeah. But if you shoot the turkey <laughs> with the blunderbuss, you're mm-hmm. like, there's there's going to be, it's it's just going to be like an absolute chaotic, bloody disaster. I think it's only think? if you're making yeah. a casserole as fast as you can. Like you just want the <laughs> giblets of the turkey all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot a cabbage next to it. You shoot some carrots. <laughs> you shoot some mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> You they, shoot a they, can they, of cream mushroom cream soup. They say the original Thanksgiving dinner was probably like eels and mussels and shellfish oh, wow. and stuff. Oh, I say. actually listened to uh, kind of one of those like great courses type things about this, and they said that they you know they brought, uh, I believe the Native Americans brought like five deer and uh, other you know different types of fowl. Mm-hmm. And an interesting thing, apparently George Washington wanted to uh, celebrate or institute uh, some version of Thanksgiving early on, like around huh. 18, like around 1789 or some, uh-huh. somewhere around there, maybe 1779. I can't remember exactly. And and he was, uh, you know, sort of th- that idea was declined. Mm. They, they, they're saying it's a, they, there's always been this period of general like harvest uh-huh. thankfulness for this bounty or the uh you know obviously the harvest type vibe it, it, even all the way back to like pagan rituals that sort of thing um but it wasn't always in november mm-hmm. what i did mm-hmm. find interesting and it was really clever is um you know despite the little speech that lucy gives about traditions fading away you know Mm -hmm. after she pulls the football away the irony is that tradition of her pulling the football away you know remains yeah (laughs) that's That's true kind of yeah Yeah. it's like within the peanuts world there's this tradition where lucy you know yanks the football away Mm -hmm. and it's saying that while she's saying traditions fade away yeah and it, it's interesting too that that's her only scene in the whole show. Like she just has. They, oh they, my god, you're right. They brought her in for like the cowabunga dude, like you know her catchphrase, <laughs> and then they, that was it. <laughs> that's kind I'm, of amazing. Pete, I'm a, or that. Tommy, I'm with you. This one was really, really strange. This is like one of those ones where you. See, it's a little Crystal Scully. It's like kind of like <laughs> it's weird. Like the whole thing's weird. Yeah, they, it's kind of like they had. It's like they drew five scenes. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why don't we make a story out of this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's like they needed to fill up time. And they're like, no, no, no. We're going to do like a dance act with Snoopy. Yeah. And he opens up the garage. And then and they'll make popcorn like, for half an hour. Yeah, they're going to make that. Which, yeah. you know, the to- and, and I was kind of like, wow, they have a garage? Like, do they have a genie? Do you remember <laughs> the genie was like yeah, if the you garage, had yeah. the electric yeah. if yeah. you had the d- electric garage door opener and it wasn't tethered to anything it just <laughs> you hit the genie button and the garage door opened it, it was like you were like on the Jetsons yeah your James Bond <laughs> you used to have to get out of your car yeah. walk mm-hmm. through the snow. That was the commercial the for it. The, you see yeah. the guy get home and he's like, oh, woe is me, not again. He's like in the pouring <laughs> rain. He's got his <laughs> trench coat up over his head trying to open the garage door. And yeah, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> Nothing can like penetrate this that. stuff he knows. <laughs> 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 Nothing can penetrate this stuff he knows. <laughs> Let's just quote commercials. I'm having fun. Yeah, we'll do <laughs> You got your chocolate, my peanut butter. Um... Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's it's frustrating to me that he that he goes for the ball even though I know he has to. Mm-hmm. It's like like he he there there. I think even in the Christmas one, like doesn't she have like a notarized like or no? It's not notarized. She has a contract <laughs> or something that's signed, and then yeah. she's like the the gag is that it's not notarized. Yeah. Um, I think there have been the stronger cases that people have made for him to kick the ball that where I, I more readily buy that he would give it a try. Is it, isn't this there is the time one work. where he's invisible and he does kick the ball? Oh, God, what? No. What? what? I, just I actually just that. looked it up before we recorded, and apparently yeah. Charles Schultz never, ever, ever had him kick the ball. Okay. Like, not even like in the last one or anything like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to find out where Jerry got this invisible Charlie Brown yeah, really? kicking the ball thing. I, I made that up. 
Oh, <laughs> I love it. It I love like, it. It's like he's faded. The universe has faded him to play out this role. Mm-hmm. No matter yeah. what happens, like this is his lot in life. Is yeah. he's gonna kick the? He's gonna try to kick the ball and he's gonna miss. I think he did finally win a baseball game in the strip. Like like their team always 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 lost, but then uh-huh. I think finally in like the nineties or something he finally won a game. So some of those traditions can be a little uh, a little wiggly, I guess. But yeah, not the football. Did Snoopy ever shoot down the Red Baron? Or did he always? Oh, Snoopy I don't know. Get shot down. That's, That's a, a great good question. question. Yeah. I mostly only know the Red Baron stuff from the Halloween special. Yeah. See, pumpkin. I think I think one reason I like this is I was, I loved the books. Like I had the the comic books, yeah. strips, like in the books when I was a kid. And for me, Snoopy was always the highlight. So th- this mm-hmm. one's yeah. very Snoopy centric, which I like. Yeah, I wonder if like when the Christmas one came out, if like Snoopy was still sort of like a like kind of like with Fonzie. Like Fonzie showed up and he was like really just like a background character, mm-hmm. or didn't even have any dialogue, and then he kind of took over. Like I wonder if like. Yeah, by Thanksgiving, Snoopy had become the Fonz, and uh, they're like, oh, well, well, they, it's I cool to have yeah. just five minutes of story, because then we'll just go nuts on, on Snoopy yeah. and Woodstock for Because they were hour. selling those Snoopy stuffed animals where you could buy all the outfits. He had, like, yeah, my sister had that. you could buy. Yeah. Yeah. My sister. Not me. My sister. <laughs> well, <laughs> your sister and I had them. <laughs> um, I love how we see Linus, and he walks right into a group, and it's like he lights a stick of dynamite by asking what all the commotion is. <laughs> and then What's he the immediately he's, yeah, he immediately starts to suck his thumb out of like anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I have to I, say, and now I'm retreating into my, my thumb sucking. Yeah. And you're like, but he walked into the group, asked what all the commotion was, and then it was kind of like, okay, now I'm anxious and need to suck my thumb. And mm-hmm. And I think all here... With these characters, there's a very interesting window into free will. Because mm-hmm. you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah you, you have, okay, so Charlie Brown, you know, before he kicks the football, he doesn't have to. Right. He's even like he has a full-on decision where he's not going to because he doesn't want to die. Mm-hmm. And then he gets mesmerized by this little tradition speech. And then he makes, he change, you know, it's a different choice. And then the same thing, you're like Linus, who's a bit of a philosopher, right? Mm -hmm. And he sucks his thumb and he's got this, you know, insecurity blanket thing. He's, he's kind of, you know, he retreats to, into, into himself by sucking his thumb. And you're like, so the first thing he puts himself in a social situation and then he starts asking, you know, what all the commotion is. And it's a little bit like, well, Linus, you've done this to yourself. (laughs) <laughs> right. he has but i've got a different the- i've got a different theory on linus I, i'm wondering after especially after this one is linus the voice of the dominant power structure <laughs> because linus always steps in and invokes tradition and the way yeah. that people should be behaving and what people should be believing mm. and he he always reinforces the dominant power structure and it's always is, is, super is traditional. Linus, it's always yeah, like yeah. super, uh, you know. Is Linus the man? Like, Linus is the voice of the man. I ah, mean, that could be, but he yeah. is, uh, the way you describe that makes me want to not like him, but I really no, like him. No, I know. Linus. I like, yeah, I know. But it's interesting. It's interesting because he, I like him, and he, but at the same time, he always plays this this role that I, I'm not sure how comfortable it's I am. It's weird. With. It's like he's not that guy, but he's the one you go to when you need that guy. Sort of, you know, like he's got that in him. He's got that, mm-hmm. you know, I'll, I'll, I've got this this Bible verse ready to go. I've got this story about Miles Standish. I got, you know, these tr- these all these traditional things at the ready. But I'm also kind of cool and hanging out and sucking my thumb and whipping <laughs> things with my blanket and stuff. Well, so, uh-huh. l- let me let me jump on this this idea of yours, Pete. I mean, so what if he is the uh, I don't know. You said the voice of. Of, like the establishment, uh, the yeah, the establishment. Yeah. But then he's like, he's maybe he's aware of that, and that is why maybe that's he's what makes him so anxious. Sucking mm. his thumb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's uh, he's constantly putting a little daisy in the end of a rifle or something. He's yeah, like, he's like, I don't want to be this guy. I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do the rifle. He's <laughs> yeah. like, he's sitting in a movie theater. His eyes are stuck open with a toothpick. He's like, like, <laughs> it's not right. I don't want to do this. <laughs> 
It's awful. I feel bad for Linus. <laughs> That's amazing, though. What you're saying, Jerry, though, about the I, we're we're, we're going to get off the football at some point. But like, just the the idea that she convinces him to do it with the idea of tradition. It's like every single time it happens, it's because yeah, it's of wild. tradition. You know, yeah. it's it's like it, it, she doesn't have to bring up tradition. It's it is a tradition for her to trick him into kicking the ball, and we want him to just you know like Pete not going to Thanksgiving because he just doesn't want to. It's not a thing for him. Right. You want Charlie Brown? I, okay, yes, this is a tradition. This is expected of me. This is what everybody wants me. No, I'm going to walk this way and not kick the goddamn ball. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> There's got to be something else over here that's not that. Ball. But you can't. That's the that's the thing about Holly. You can't do that. I guess. You're not allowed well, that's to do a, that. That's what's fascinating. You can, so okay, so you can't not go to Christmas, right? Mm. You know, or it's a huge, huge thing you know? to not go to Christmas. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you yeah. might not end relationships, but it'll be like, what that? What was he doing? Why wasn't he? At Christmas? <laughs> what, well, what was if, that? If Charlie Brown walks away, then mm. do we have the 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 movie or cartoon at all? No, because he's not Charlie Brown. Yeah. I mean, are there he's, he's other? No I mean, could longer, he still I mean, not get any mail in the mailbox and still? No, you know, the, the Charlie. Get what Charlie Brown makes Charlie Charlie Brown is that he loses. Right, but I mean, he loses in so many ways. Though, if he gave up one of those that he was complicit in every single time, could he still be Charlie Brown? <laughs> I don't think so. Like, I don't think he. I don't think he can kick the football and be Charlie Brown. I don't. I but don't can he choose like, not to even try to kick the football and be Charlie Brown? No, because that's that shows a God level damn, of agency that I don't think his character has. Like he, I, we see over and over. Like, what does Sally say? You're just so wishy washy. Yeah, yeah. That's like Charlie Beige. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Enabler. Charlie Khaki. Well, that yeah. that's what. So we talk about free will, and yet it doesn't seem to exist. No, no. not in this. Not for TV yeah. characters. Yeah. No. I okay. No, I mean, Except Linus is pre. Linus has to do his speech every time. But you know Charlie what? Charlie Brown is the loot. We don't feel that way about Snoopy, do we? That's what makes Snoopy such a magnetic character. He's like the he's the one free agent. Mm -hmm. He's the cartoon character. He's he's somebody who can. He's the only one who actually acts sort of like a cartoon character. Like he can like you know he takes a napkin and he kind of flicks it with his wrist and then it's a beautiful little origami mm -hmm. thing and stuff. Yeah, and he's got all those sort of cartoon superpowers. And he's, you know, buttering toast while it's in the air and everything. Um, and nobody else seems to quite have that. I mean, they flip upside down when they're shocked and stuff like that. And toast s smoke comes out of their head and everything. But, like, he's got, like, the cartoon powers that nobody else seems mm -hmm. to have. And he, you know, he, he is like the queen in chess. He can go any direction yeah. he wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, ba basically the embodiment of all the other uh, pieces in the sense that he has the full range of emotion. Yeah, he does mm -hmm. win. Like when you look at him set the the table, or even butter the toast, you're like, "Damn, mm -hmm. dude, I can't butter toast like that." <laughs> but like he loses toast. too. Like it's, what? He, it's that's, a, that's what right. it's that's what makes him great. Is he's a, he's got the like you said, he's got the full range of emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and he does the coolest stuff. And also, there are other times when he does lose, or the thing doesn't happen, or he gets bested by mm -hmm. somebody. Or a chair. Well, and he's also he's yeah, also super chair. charming, like he's really charming and magnetic. But he's also a huge jerk. <laughs> like, <Woodstock. laughs> it, like it's yeah. it's funny. Like he's got so many character traits, and they're all Snoopy. Like he's he contains multitudes. See, every day <laughs> the way we're describing all the characters, I don't want to like it, or it sounds like I wouldn't like any of them. But I <laughs> no, do. I think that's part of their power is that they're, yeah. they're like archetypes. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't want to think of of Snoopy as like some detached, aloof jerk who's above it all. But he's not. He's he's he's, he's no, more he's just not. Like he's doing his yeah. own thing. He's not even considering. Oh, that kid keeps kicking a football. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, I'm on the top of my house. I'm fighting the Red Baron. I'm whatever. <laughs> I'm writing a book. You know, yeah. He's yeah, almost even... like a Greek deity. He's like a. He's like a <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. But even watching the Charlie Brown specials, whether it's the Halloween one, but especially the Christmas one, that in and of itself is tradition. Mm -hmm. oh sure like yeah. they yeah. come on every year and then you know they play it like 24 hours a day on i don't even know yeah. is tnt even around <laughs> i don't know what I don't know. television looks like but anymore. you know what i mean there, there's some like they would just play it 24 hours a day certainly yeah. christmas specials and the, you know this certainly when we were kids in the 70s and 80s oh, this God, yeah. would come on mm -hmm. and it was a huge deal when it would come on yeah um mm -hmm. And to the point where, like, it. now if I go through the season and I don't see it, I'm like, oh, no, 
It's like January. I didn't watch uh, Charlie didn't. Brown. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's like the tradition is wrapped up, and the tradition is wrapped up in the tradition. Yeah. 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 We have um, <laughs> Sally who wants to hold hands with Linus under the Thanksgiving table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just I, I kind of dig that she's one of them pervert types. <laughs> there are a lot of those them, them pervert types. In yeah, this, you sly she's dog. like we could because she kind of like she's kind of like no, we're gonna get together mm-hmm. with the whole family, whatever at Thanksgiving that whole celebration with turkeys and blunderbusses and cornucopias, but we're gonna inject this. Uh, I don't know this tension, this romantic flavor, <laughs> mm-hmm. this color. Nobody has under. to know. Yeah, nobody has to know. <laughs> and so I wonder: are they sitting next to each other, or would they hold hands under the table, like fully? They're sitting across from each other, <laughs> or like they meet hands. under the table. They just crawl under the table and meet in the middle. <laughs> they, they crawl. <laughs> they're kids, after all. They're very little. That's true. <laughs> And there is a lot of that. We we get this. Uh, there's a whole lot of unrequited love in this, and yeah. a whole lot of you sly dog you. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like just wildly lobbed, not innuendo, but like you know, like like just <laughs> just like hey, you slide, you know, like hey, yeah. you're obviously into me and stuff, and yeah. you know, just like not exactly come ons, but like you know, something's in the air, isn't it? Like I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean there's something yeah. in the air? <laughs> like that kind of stuff, and. uh yeah, going both ways, and it is kind of crazy. And you're like, wait, yeah. this kid's like five or something, like six maybe. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what's happening. Fifteen. Yeah. But speaking of like you know not kicking the ball and just deciding not to, I there's I we're, we're watching Charlie Brown on the phone. Peppermint Patty is like steamrolling over everything, inviting herself over, then inviting Why? Marcy and Franklin well, and all this stuff. I, uh, well, I, uh, well, well, I, uh, and then he's all like bent up in knots and explaining to like Linus, you know, like, oh, I'm, what am I going to do? Peppermint Patty invited herself over. I'm not even going to be here. And I, all I could think of was like, oh my God, if that happened to me, if I knew somebody like Peppermint <laughs> Patty and she invited herself over and wouldn't let me talk and invited three other people over and stuff and I wasn't going to be there, I'd be like, this is so great as i'm at my grandmother's house <laughs> eating my thanksgiving dinner with my family i'm gonna know the peppermint patty's like knocking at my door wondering where the hell i am she has no idea what happened she can't figure out like she can't get her head around the idea that something went wrong this is so great this is just this, the way it should happen. something strange about the way they all interact Mm-hmm. Like that scene, what? Yeah, it it makes me feel. I guess that that's how I knew it was just later, and where Charlie Brown's like, "Well, I," uh, <laughs> and he says it. Oh, yeah, and and then and then they're like, "Oh, they're bringing Marcy," and then bringing Franklin, mm-hmm. and it's it it's really interesting. At first, it's like a date, like Peppermint Patty is gonna go visit Chuck because it's a date. Mm-hmm. But then that whole thing switches, and it's like, oh, there's this other kid, Marcy, and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. It's like a threesome thing, <laughs> and that's what they're interested in Because the way she doing. says it, well, yeah. Marcy kind of wanted to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. I like, it sounds that. like a romantic thing. Yeah, it she did. really hit you're it like, off that last time. Yeah. Y- yeah, and I was like, what is it that we're doing? And then they invite <laughs> Franklin and it turns into I think, yeah. I think it's clear what, what they're doing, Jerry. <laughs> I, listen, I'm fine with that, man. It's called peanuts. Hey, it's the seventies. It's the seven. <laughs> it's like where I, I hear Linus right now giving the speech. A key party is when you have <laughs> Caligula instituted. A... <laughs> I believe it was Jack Horner who said. <laughs> <laughs> and John <laughs> Holmes was sore afraid. <laughs> now the first day of school is when we show up and play Johnny Deeper. <laughs> Lights, please. <laughs> it's giving the speech. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, but Charlie says something to Linus that I think to me captures the holidays perfectly as he says he feels like he's lost control of the whole world <laughs> and i love that i like that's thanksgiving Incredible. that is beautiful yeah yeah charlie brown is weird in this episode he's super anxious and there are times when they show him 
sort of by himself and he's like oddly hunched over and he's mm-hmm. got like the cr- he's got like a craned back and he's like kind of got I don't know a squiggle on his forehead yeah. and he's really uncomfortable. Well, like and his it- empathy gland is broken. Like it's just spewing <laughs> forth empathy. Like he just yeah. he can't. It's a me. It's just like surging in this episode. Well, it's, it's like yeah. he does all of that in the Christmas one. He's stooped over. He's worried about stuff. I just don't get it, Linus. Why don't I like Christmas and stuff? But that's that's the point. Like he, it makes more. He's he's got a weight on him. He's got like yeah. he's trying to figure something out in yeah. the moment of, in the season. Right. This is kind of like oh, this girl invited herself over. What do I do? I'm a total doormat. How did I get myself into this doormat situation? But why why do we? Like is is Patty a predator? Like does she see mm. that weakness and she says, "Oh, I can strike now. This is my chance to strike." I think no, so. She's she's and, uh, she's more like a just a sort of narcissist kind of. You know, she just she she. Hey, what I want is to go to Chuck's house and 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 have a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. I'm going to make that happen. And like just kind of you know storming through and not you don't think to any you don't think well, part of that. Knows calculus in her head is that well he's gonna do whatever i say because he's not gonna say no because he doesn't want to hurt my feelings i mean that might be why he appeals to her is that he can she can get away with stuff yeah. and and you know kind of steamroll him and everything um, Predi- yeah predator's a little strong i don't i mean we do see later that she second guesses her actions yeah, right? I, I, yeah. that's so, a, that's to me that's a, a, a kind of a magical moment that's a rare moment where she mm-hmm. recognizes in herself like oh but then Lucy's what does she more do? Of a predator. Lucy's the predator of the bunch. She actually goes, <laughs> yeah. she specifically yeah. goes after That's Charlie true. Brown and messes with him. But what's That's fascinating true. is Peppermint Patty has that self aware moment and then does what? Yeah, then she sprays upon Marcy. 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 Yeah. yeah. Now, why don't yeah. you go tell Chuck you're good at that sort of thing? <laughs> yeah. And she's well, like, it's... I'm just going to mess it up again. Well, it's avoidance. It's like, it's mm-hmm. sort of like Charlie Brown. She's also avoiding having to deal with what she's done like she's going to make someone else do it for her. Yeah. She's not fully realized. This is a whole the, a lot of the stuff in this is all about avoidance. Mhm. Oh, oh yeah. The whole thing, yeah. I think on the Christmas episode Charlie Brown is more philosophical. He is. About, about yeah. It. yeah, he's kind of walking around and he has questions mm-hmm. from Linus. Well, I mean, there's more are, going on. Yeah. There's more for him to be yeah. thinking about whereas yeah. this right. is like, oh no, there's a there's a yeah. you know, slight But I have to pas. be at my grandmother's house. Right. The yeah. script like, says that in 25 right. minutes I'm supposed to. Yeah, it's it's a little just sort of forced and. I uh, like that though. It feels like a like a weird nightmare. Like I can't wake <laughs> up from. Like it just it feels off. Like it yeah. all yeah. feels weird and like a kind of a half forgotten dream. I love mm-hmm. it. It's well, so, so Pete, surreal. Like let there's me so ask much you. surreal about this. Is the grandmother real? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's what I, I was because he calls his I'll grandmother. Well, yeah, I'll tell right. you. I'll tell you why she's real, and I'll tell you why you you always say, Pete, you're emotionally what do you say? Emotionally distant. You're emotionally avoidant. <laughs> I'll tell you why. It's explained in this. It, Charlie Brown calls his grandmother, and he says, <laughs> "Hi, Grandma. It's Chuck. I mean, it's Charlie Brown, <laughs> because his grandmother will not recognize who he is unless he gives his first and last name. I don't know. There's Chuck. a cold formality Quick. to his family and to his life." <laughs> Yeah, and I love it. Like that's yeah. that's an incredible little window into so many things right there. I absolutely love. Yeah. Well, and and he had to somehow bridge, you know, the friend Charlie mm-hmm. Brown with the family Charlie Brown. Yeah, Hi, yeah. This yeah. is Chuck, and you're like, no, you just messed it up, dude. Yeah. It's like it's like Peppermint Patty just put a nose ring in or something for him, and he's like in front of his grandmother. No, no, no. It's not. A, I'm not that kind of Charlie Brown. I kind of thought though it would be interesting if the grandmother actually is not real, like it's just a voice. Mm. I mean, they they de per- they dehumanize like a voice in his head, like or yeah, like a-, like a voice in his head, like Charlie Brown hears voices. <laughs> he's got his finger on the thing on the phone the whole time he's talking to her. <laughs> Nobody wants to say anything about it, like uh, Charles. Like a- Fight Club situation. <laughs> totally, <laughs> it's his grandma. <laughs> his grandma. I kind of love that. And I was See you like, soon, Grandma. On. I love you. And they're all just sort of running around, and he's got this place to be. His grandma's yeah. the cool one. Because <laughs> oh, you, you know, when they load up the car at the end, you're like, "Who's driving?" Oh, there's that's that is also very realistic. Like there's yeah. no parental supervision. There are no seatbelts, and there's right. no. Yeah, it's yeah. like that's a good. It's a cool, um, just aspect of the whole peanuts world that you never have to deal with like 
grown-ups are not important to this is it just about the kids but when cars are involved <laughs> and telephones <laughs> and plans and, and appointments yeah. and things that that's when it gets weird yeah like wait a minute wait a minute you might but the parents parents are never involved in these in peanuts in a way that's helpful to the children mm-hmm. i yeah. mean i guess grandma is a little bit here but for the most part they're never any they're, they're never going to fix anything or solve any problems right which well, is, you, you know, okay. kind of how childhood feels sometimes. Yeah. 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 Pete, you mentioned this being sort of like a nightmare. <laughs> and it got me thinking, what, like, how would you describe the horizon? It, there's, if you look at it, there's like, I think there's like two. Like the sky is specifically two different colors throughout the cartoon. There's, you know, the one, it's either this like, post-apocalyptic smog uh-huh. or it might be the northern lights <laughs> it's, it's yeah. cleveland in other words it's, it's kind of <laughs> cleveland. yeah it's, it's kind of like this it's like this sort of sort of this muted like medium blue and then there's mm-hmm. sort of like these bright, it is it's like, like a smog brown. on the horizon it's like a brownish yeah. haze mm-hmm. there's like a brownish thing on the horizon like it's either smog or maybe it's just sort of Sort of a color in there to sort of invoke Thanksgiving in the fall. Or it's like, like the dreamlike fog. Like they're sort yeah. of walking through this weird dream world. Where there are no parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And kids have and it, and, and it, it remains like that. Like it doesn't, you know, it, it's always sort of the same kind of, the same time. Until yeah. later at the very end when the grandma says like, hey, why don't you bring your friends over? They all get in the car, and I think the sky turns sort of like a pink. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, if there were parents to drive the car, then where were they? Like, were they just watching while like a dog was setting up a ping pong table as a dining room table in the backyard and making popcorn and buttering bread and everything? Yeah, I, like, where did they get? Like, there, it's almost like a Dali thing where they have like thirty <laughs> toasters, which I love. It's like so surreal. Yeah. It's amazing. And where did like where did they get them? Why and why, why are the parents not at all? And why yeah. aren't the parents saying, hey, Charlie, would your friends like to come to Thanksgiving? It's because right. it's, a, it's an incredibly emotionally distant family, which I think also rings yeah. true. Yeah. And then Pat, like Peppermint Patty's like dad just leaves. Like she's like, oh, my dad got called ah. out of town or whatever. So I guess I'm, I'm I have <laughs> yeah, to invite I myself, myself to your house. Sorry. Yeah. And also Franklin doesn't have a family, apparently. And Marcy's out. No, on he, the street. He's, his family said he would be it would be OK if he came to the party. Oh, OK. Yeah, I missed yeah. that. Okay, I feel better yeah, about Franklin that. Has What's a interesting family. is they're all from the other side of town, and you're yeah. like, okay, how big is the town? Yeah. Uh, and like, are yeah. they far enough to be the wrong side of the track? Yeah, is it the wrong side of the... Yeah, I was wondering that yeah. too. Is it the wrong side <laughs> of the track situation? Or, but does that mean Charlie's on the right side of the tracks? I don't know. He, I mean, they seem to have a, you know, a comfortable life, you know? He's got yeah. Okay, what about... Is, is, from. is every single other kid on the other side of town other than charlie brown no i feel like linus is in and lucy are on his side of the town too they are i think everybody who wasn't in the comic strip from the beginning like i think he meets peppermint patty and marcy at like summer camp or something oh really i don't know and yeah i don't know where franklin showed up from exactly but yeah they it, it feels like anybody who's who's added later on like rerun there's a kid rerun later on i don't know but anyway yeah there's like uh I don't know. There's like the, the the core group, and then like the people from a few blocks over or something. Yeah, I could just be making that up. But, but it's it like to me. it's interesting who doesn't show up. Like there's no Pigpin, there's no Schroeder, there's no. Yeah, like it's interesting who shows up and who doesn't. Oh, it's very yeah. light. The whole thing is light because yeah, like you mentioned Schroeder. I'm like, oh my god, there's no Schroeder. That's like I mean, and he's not like a huge part of the Halloween one necessarily, but he's still there and it's cool. And you there's know. no little redheaded girl. Right, yeah. There's yeah, yeah. There's no like you know like Patty and 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 whatever with the Frida with the curly hair and stuff and because yeah. it, it really is it's like a fever dream and you're locked into this <laughs> nightmare that you can't escape from. You're locked into your fate. You're gonna kick the football and you're gonna miss it. You're gonna yeah. ruin Thanksgiving by trying to make a nice Thanksgiving for people. You're gonna it, like these things. That, <laughs> yeah, somehow been, you're gonna get blamed for doing a nice thing. Yeah, in railroad yeah. Been, yeah. It's been preordained from the beginning of time, and I love that. It. It's like it's got <laughs> it's like a Greek tragedy. Like you can't escape <laughs> your fate. Man, it's beautiful. Well, so but. what? One of the big <laughs> themes is. We have two Thanksgiving dinners. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. thought about this. Like, okay, that's sort of its own problem right there. 
you have to be at one house at what was it 4 30 and then peppermint patty and the whole other people are coming over and i thought okay hang on is this sort of sort of a uh is this touching upon an increasing like rate of divorce in america Mm. Mm. We have two Thanksgiving dinners because it's like, oh, yeah, we you, we have a higher incidence of divorce. Uh, maybe divorce was becoming more common by the 60s or the, the 70s. And you're like, OK, people have two Christmases. They have two houses they have to go to. They have two Thanksgivings they have to go to. It could be and, that or it could be just like the like um, you're describing what my childhood was like but i didn't come from a divorced family or anything like my, my parents families lived like two hours away from each other in ohio and mm. my mom felt that we had to have both christmases we had to do mm. christmas in you know the cleveland yeah. area and then in coshocton ohio and it was like so that we always had two christmases we often had two thanksgivings and stuff and so like it gets it's either the breaking up of the family or it's just like the madness of the holidays and like the, the, mm. the mania of the holidays yeah the well, i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm going to take that question into the present day. How many people in this show are getting together for Friendsgiving? Oh, on oh. this show? How many how, are Charlie and Peppermint Patty? Oh, this show. Who's okay. invited to Friendsgiving? Yeah, I don't. Well, is that what we're calling this? The, the, the ping pong table? Well, well no. Yeah, well, that's like that's the, that's the thing now. Like everybody oh, has yeah, Friendsgivings right, right, right. before yeah. Thanksgiving. Who, like when, when these people are all grown up. Mm-hmm. Who's coming to Friendsgiving? Are they all are they all coming? Are they all still friends? I kinda wanna say Is yeah. Lucy still trying to make Charlie kick the football and he's still he's wow. still I think there are definitely groups within this group that'll still be together. That's weirding I, me out. Do you think like Sally is still like with Linus? I'd like to hold your hand. She is, here. but Linus yeah. is married to someone else and she's still oh, like no. Linus. We could hold hands at the table. Yeah. Uh under the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think that's a lot got yeah. Weird. <laughs> I love that's it. That's more, just, yeah. That's more than Friendsgiving, Pete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like friends with benefits giving. <laughs> <laughs> but like did we find out what happened to did Schroeder die in Vietnam? Is that why he's not here? Like what happened to oh, all God. these people? Um yeah, we never got that title card at the end. Yeah. That says what happened to everybody. Yeah. Where's Pig oh, yeah. Did Pig Pin ever was he ever forced to take a shower? I mean, again, Pig Pin is an <laughs> example of away. non-existent parents. Yeah. You know, we talked about Peppermint Patty having this this self-aware moment. And I want to know, she says, quote, why can't I act right outside of a baseball game? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think yeah. that was one of the best lines in this show. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, how often do people feel that way and pete do you feel that way that what is your baseball game well i don't have one i don't i don't ever feel like i do the right thing like i feel like yeah. i'm always <laughs> like, I'm with you it. don't even have the Except one place where you're yeah. <laughs> comfortable <enough. laughs> i just skate by with my thumb in my mouth and, and people don't seem to mind me <laughs> well i mean you know peppermint patty is 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 totally broken outside of baseball mm-hmm and but it's interesting Charlie- that it, it takes someone else to make her see because she's it's interesting because when they start eating the food, Charlie Brown has his eyes closed and is savoring every bite of the popcorn. He is yeah. like living absolutely in the moment. And finally, everything's worked out. He's calm. He's enjoying it. And suddenly Peppermint Patty says, what the, what are you doing? This sucks. Everything <laughs> sucks. And she she not only makes him feel horrible, she makes Snoopy like put the hat over his head in shame and feel horrible. Like yeah. she makes yeah. everyone feel horrible. And she only recognizes that she's wrong because Marcy points it out, which I think is yeah. even more interesting. Like she what didn't d- recognize it on, on her own. What drove me nuts about that is like, it's pop corn. There's nothing wrong with that. It's pop corn. Oh, it's like a, yeah. That's yeah. A, a it's, different it's, serving it's of corn. totally on thing. brand. Yeah. <laughs> it's corn, Do you guys like cold dude. toast? Do you guys, have, do you guys? Um, Sure. I like the toast. I thought the I've, toast I've always idea found was cold toast kind of disgusting. Like that was actually my favorite line. Of, my favorite line of the thing was when Charlie Brown saying, "What am I going to do? I can make toast or whatever." And, and Linus says, "Oh yeah, I've seen you make toast. 
You can't butter it, but maybe we can help you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and he doesn't even say it as like a punchline. He's just like, yeah. yeah, I've seen you make toes. You can't yeah. butter it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting is like we have Thanksgiving coming up, right? We mm-hmm. have, uh, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, certainly this chaotic political climate in mm-hmm. our country. Everybody's talking, you know, people are either afraid about Thanksgiving or, you know, again, it's going to be heightened or whatever. And mm-hmm. here you have Peppermint Patty who sort of performs the, you know, it, it, it does the worst thing possible. But you know, she, is, she, well, she's invited. I mean, she's invited over. We're going to have this Thanksgiving. Well, that's and kind of the Pepper original Thanksgiving Patty story. She just show up uninvited and take everything. But. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're coming to dinner, whether you like it or not. <laughs> but she's like, what is it? You know, she, she, they, she basically completely sort of ruins Thanksgiving. Right after she's demanded that Linus pray. Yeah. Right. Yeah. With, and Pete, I have a question for you question for you they're all directed at pete this episode yeah. i just have a note that says q pete she says after the the you know the praying she says amen not mm-hmm. amen but uh-huh. amen is that the sign of an evangelical oh that's a good question do evangelicals oh, no. say amen i think they say both I've they say both, both. From, yeah, i've always done yeah. amen Oh, like really? I never, no. yeah, never. I don't remember as a growing up Catholic anybody amening. Really, huh. it was I always like amen. All place. Really, all right. I yeah. think it's one of those like faux. If you amen, it kind of sounds like you're trying to be <laughs> overly, I don't know, traditional. Yeah, it's like saying I when you mean me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're like our amen. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. Uh... Either way. <laughs> but it, it got me. She said that. Very yeah. punctuated. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. <laughs> if, I mean, if Peppermint Patty's an evangelical, she's got a lot of problems. Yeah, uh, really. She's got a long <laughs> could, road to hoe. Could, could Patty's <laughs> behavior happen in this day and age in our in our present national international climate? Could someone point out that someone has done something, is believing something that might be incorrect, and the person says, "Oh." I think you're right. Mm. Wait, wait. Is she saying? The fact that someone says, hey, I I think you're mistaken here. Oh, right, right. And she says, oh, you're right. I am. I'm going to have a change of heart. I think if there were more people like Marcy out there who could could deliver that message, then maybe yes. That would be nice. Because I I do think Marcy's awesome and she's kind of like. No, I think uh, Marcy's awesome too. Yeah. She's sort of Spock-like in a way. She's like sort she of. Is. Like, she looks like Spock. She's like, I don't know what to do with this person. Like, I don't know how to talk to them exactly. But when I well, need technically, them, she's like Savick, Tom. But I, mean, I suppose. But who cares about <laughs> Savick? I like Spock. <laughs> but she's uh, I gosh, I, there was a uh, a stuff you should know episode, the podcast about about peanuts. I think they did a two part one, and I never considered this, but they said a lot of people growing up assumed that Marcy was Asian. And they loved that. They oh. loved that she was Asian. They were like, oh, I, I, I finally I get to see myself, you know, like the kind of nerdy, awkward Asian kid. That's me. Like, you know, yeah. I'm seeing myself. And, and Charles Schultz said, well, I think he finally said, like, well, that wasn't my intention, but sure, why not? You know, okay. Huh. That, that, yeah. that works. Yeah. Huh. Um, but yeah, I've always liked Marcy and, and uh, I don't know. She, just, she, she cuts through. She's kind of like Linus. She kind of cuts uh, through yeah. the nonsense. Mm-hmm. Right. When but she, she needs doesn't. To. She 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 does it with she's a different a little more tactful than Linus. Yeah, she's a little less, a little less. Well, actually, it's like this, people. Like, you need to. <laughs> yeah, like, she doesn't pontificate yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. she's kind of like, uh, look, sir, you're, you're yeah, kind of blew it. Well, <laughs> like okay, so she is. Yeah. If you if you just kind of look at the obvious, so granted. Peppermint Patty invited herself and others over to Thanksgiving. But putting that aside, she shows up and is expecting a Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they get the to- buttered toast and popcorn and like, I don't know, Jolly Ranch. Jelly beans and yeah, jelly, jelly beans and pretzels. <laughs> so yeah. is that a reason to be upset? Would would that be a reason to be upset? First For of all, some we're breaking, people, yeah. There's some we're, people we're breaking who would get with mad tradition. Quite a few people, again. I'm going to say yes. 
Yeah. Okay, you say yet, yeah, but okay, why? Is it because they were expecting to eat a dinner and now they're going to be hangry? Or is it because, no, traditionally speaking, which is what she says, we bring out pumpkin mm -hmm. pie and turkey yeah. and cranberry sauce. That, yeah, that she is, had an expectation in mind and yeah. it wasn't met, and that'll make somebody furious. Yeah. Once yeah. again, about tradition then. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And like if you don't fulfill the traditional rights, people tend to get upset. Yeah. But but he did put on this party. He did. He did yeah. everything right. And and as Marcy says, you know, he invited it. Well, she said that you invited yourself over and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But he did indulge them. Mm -hmm. It's, no, it's kind of like he feels horrible because he says it's heartbreaking. Is he's like I, I'm not upset for myself. I just feel bad that I ruined everybody's Thanksgiving. <laughs> God, there are probably so many. I think my mom must have seen this and was like, she probably went in the other room and cried a little bit every time she saw this. Because, <laughs> and and there must have been so many, like just moms or hosts or anybody across America who are like, every year I I host Thanksgiving. I try so hard, and oh my God, I use the canned cranberries, and Aunt Martha right. went berserk <laughs> on me. Like it just wasn't good enough. No matter yeah. what I do, it's not good. Like there's yeah. always gonna be that kind of thing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sad and crazy. <laughs> oh, there is one minor thing that you guys might have missed that I want to explain to you because it goes by really quickly. Okay. Franklin, the character who was, we, was the first time we've seen him in any of these uh, specials, yeah. he's black so that when he comes in the room, he does a thing with Charlie Brown where they slap each other five because that's the thing that black kids do. I just want to I... explain that to you because it goes by, <laughs> I don't want you guys to be confused or, or lost or anything. I saw that and I was like, I'm not going to touch this with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> I it did. Is it is. You, you see, and you're like, like oh, of course they did that. that. But then you think yeah. about it for two more seconds. You're like, why the hell did they do that? It's why 1973 the hell is why they did yeah. that. And it's, yeah. why it's, it's like it's the inclusion aspect, too, which is, I, it is. I like. It, but it's just like they're trying to broaden. No, it's totally good natured. Yeah. It's like it's coming yeah. from a good place. But it's like, guys, okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, it's very 1973. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I was I couldn't remember if we had ever seen Franklin like if he'd showed up before in the in this comic strip or in the. He must have shown up in the comic strip, or I don't think anybody was like introduced in the specials. I think everything comes from okay. the comic strips. I think that's always been my impression. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm not sure when he first showed up. But he's always he's like a he's like a kind of Schroeder kind of guy, like sort of you don't know too much about him. Yeah. But he like, seems yeah. like a good guy, going and yeah, and like he'll say just enough stuff so that you know he's a good guy and a cool guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you: Do you think Pigpen ever gets invited to anything around food? He was invited <laughs> to both Halloween and <laughs> that's true. Thanksgiving. Or Halloween Christmas. is the stickiest yeah, tradition there is, and he was that's all over. True. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, you well, just kind of wonder. Because Sally says Sally is moaning. She's that it's already Thanksgiving and she hasn't finished her Halloween candy yet. Yeah. Which is, I think oh, yeah. is a great line. Sorry, were you about to say something, Jerry? No, I was just thinking of all this sort of this this like dust bowl that is pig pen, and then he shows up at the Thanksgiving table, and there's just like you know, like the buttered of, bread would just be, yeah, grit. You take a bite, you'd be like eating <laughs> grit. Yeah, exactly. They'd just be like, I, I'm not sure what like, I don't know, sand or like a screwdriver, or something. Just I don't what whatever is sort of in his orbit. Like uh, the things, uh, the sort of detritus that orbits well, did, pig pen. Do the kids ever ex <laughs> intentionally exclude other kids? Like, do you think they're intentionally excluding pig pen and Schroeder, or do you think I they were just too polite to barge in? I don't. I, no, I, well, no. I think in a case like this, they probably you know have their own they stable their own family. family. Everybody yeah. has things. a grandma. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who lives in a condo? Oh yeah, that okay. What was the turnaround joke of that? It was so. The point was, is uh, to grandmother's house we go. Yeah, yeah. And he says, "Oh, it's, it's a like condominium." like another 1973 joke. It's like, yeah. oh no, wah, it's also wah. it's like a ton of these too. I think they are literally from the comic strips. You can see how that would be a comic strip yeah, joke. That's, like that's three that's panels totally of them singing that song, yeah. and then at the end, oh wait, she's from a condo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent that <laughs> it, it did. <laughs> well. And it would have been funnier in the comic strip. Yeah, probably. The comic strip yeah. is really great. It's one of the it greatest fantastic, yeah. written word publications yeah. on the face of the earth. Which is weird. I, I remember very little of it, except that I absolutely loved every second of it. Yeah. 
there's something about I, I only stumbled upon this recently and I think it relates to like peanuts and dogs and a lot of other cartoons. <laughs> the, the the way that like, you know, dogs don't have like a lot of expression in their face and neither do like peanuts characters. And uh-huh. it's up to you. Like they'll just like a, mm. like Linus will say something smart and cutting and witty. And it's up to you to like see that in his face because his face is completely oh, that's blank. Interesting. You have to like feed that in that 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 emotion into him, and you kind of do that with dogs too. Like, look at that fella, he's sniffing around that tree. What's he after? Yeah, what's he gonna do? And you you kind of you it's you have to meet the dog halfway. You kind of have to meet the peanuts characters halfway because they don't do enough with their faces or something. Oh, that's interesting. I love that. Do, I that's do cool. too. Do you feel like there's a sense of relief? Like you can put down the trouble that Charlie Brown uh, experiences daily, you know, because it, the way this ends, they get in the car, mm. they start singing. And Grandma lives in a condominium, and yet, well, I think some... that, I think the condominium joke means that you can't, is it? No matter how you think, <laughs> yeah. oh, I can finally take this sigh of relief, I can breathe. Oh wait. This song doesn't work because my grandma lives in a condominium. <laughs> but is that yeah. okay? But now at this point, like, is that even a problem? Like Charlie Brown well, is kind of like Charlie just Brown. making up his own. It is. Well, no, he is. That's, that's what Charlie Brown does. He makes that's up his what own he does. problems. That's, that's who he yeah. is. Yeah. See, that's what's annoying. Like at Christmas, it's fa- like we started this thing talking about like, oh, what's for the matter with me? I'm not into holidays and stuff. There's something wrong with me. Like that's like a real human thing to wrestle with. And you're, it, it's not like Charlie Brown's making that up, and it's not forced or anything. But then here in this one, it's like, relax, you know? Okay, it's a, turn that into a cutting joke or something that your grandmother lives in a condominium and it doesn't fit the song. Like that's a funny little ha ha. Doesn't have to be something to freak out about. Relax. But you, you see his expression it. on his. That is one of the rare expressions on his face that he is freaking out about it, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> like he's really upset about. Why is it that big of a deal? <laughs> <laughs> like Peppermint uh, Patty's gonna be like, no, wait, just a minute. I was told there's gonna yeah, be a thing through yeah. the woods and over the thing we go. What the? What is this? <laughs> but that's because that's that's the life he's been condemned to lead, and that's what he's yeah. expecting to happen, and that's what will inevitably yeah. happen. Like she will get angry at him because it's in a condominium. God, is part of that because he's friends with Linus, who's a super traditionalist, and he feels like that's like he's got, he's got to live up to that. Like like oh maybe Linus is sort of like the embodiment of the sort of like standard traditional mm-hmm. you know institutional whateverness and stuff yeah so don't he's stray live from up the, to that that's yeah, all he knows this very narrow path yeah well it would he be better off <laughs> if they just harvested his organs <laughs> <laughs> and just put him out because you no, have because he'd be entire... worried that his organs would fail and someone else's yeah. body would die. <laughs> like yeah, I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about my organs were failed. Yeah, Charlie. Brown. Kid, I love that. He's, he's the only that's... person I know whose eyes got given to a blind man, and then he drove his car off a cliff. <laughs> totally. that's, what it, that's what he's the he's the most neurotic kid. Like, yeah, he really is. All. I love it. It's 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 great. Yeah. It is endearing. It's like yeah. you know, it's not it's not depressing. It's not uh, no. I mean, it lasts for of, decades, and we love it. And it's, it's, it's a little I, I don't know though, because it's, it, me, I like I could see myself in some of these things. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, oh, I identify with some of these things he's saying. This is kind of I don't know. You don't often hear this kind of thing show up in popular entertainment. Yeah, and I guess Such it's like kids. you know, he's he's so relatable. Like he has all the same worries that we do. Mm-hmm. And like he's not the popular kid, he's not a super successful, he's not able in a lot of ways. He's yeah. you know he's just having trouble all the time, and that's how everybody feels. But he still perseveres, and he smiles at the end of most things, and not this one, but like you know the end of Christmas and stuff, and Halloween and everything. And he just he generally is doing fine, even if he's racked with no, he's always worry, good natured. And he's always nice to people. He's yeah. always like he's yeah. trying. He's yeah. yeah, he's hoping for the best. He's he's yeah, not. But, Tommy, I remember things. we did some of these other ones. Some of these other ones you talked about, and we we're mm-hmm. like, you know, he's really a punisher, and he's just like <laughs> not fun to be around. <laughs> And you're like, you're just like, and you, I remember you saying a long time ago, maybe the Christmas one, it's like, hey, dude, just relax. Like, you know, life is <laughs> right. hard enough. And you're talking about condominiums and all this. Yeah. Just like we're singing a song for Christ's sake. seven, dude. Just relax. Yeah. <laughs> you already have alopecia. Like the shit's getting real weird. <laughs> you have one shirt. You have you one smell. shirt. Patty even yeah. points out the one shirt. in the episode. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. They get a little meta. <laughs> God, <laughs> I love that she tells everyone else not to bother dressing up. Oh, it's just it's Charlie Brown. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. Don't wear a tie. It's Charlie. God. Yeah. <laughs> so they all go over to grandma's, and uh, what? I, so, oh, 
Snoopy and Woodstock are at the end, aren't they? Because they're the stars, apparently. It is is Woodstock a cannibal? Is this cannibalism? Yeah, or it's like it, Jeffrey Chalmers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Is it okay? What are you doing? It's, it's super weird. Woodstock, it weird. I, I don't know why they did that. Woodstock is a bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and he's crystal very clear. Gleefully eating another bird. <laughs> yeah, and then he he, he the, and then he snaps the wishbone, mm-hmm. and he yeah. flies to backwards through the air, and he turns to the camera and gives this weird, like lascivious grin. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's he gonna it's wish? Really for? creepy. Yeah, this was my he's cousin. Gonna for, <laughs> he's gonna wish for Snoopy to turn inside <laughs> out for killing that bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's super creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would have made a lot more sense if they were the ones who just went whole hog on the uh, popcorn and the jelly yeah. beans and the pretzel sticks and everything. That would have been great. Because when 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 Charlie Brown says, we've all been invited over to Grandma's, and everybody cheers, <laughs> and Snoopy and Woodstock cheer the loudest, yeah. and then they're yeah. not invited to go along. And I'm right. wondering, are they happy that everyone's just leaving them alone finally <laughs> and not finally ordering just, them around? You'd just be weird without people <laughs> looking at us. All yeah. Right. I'll make toast on my own terms for once. <laughs> it's funny because, like you always think of Snoopy as super endearing but he's like a total bully too to poor Woodstock you know yeah, he does he's that, always he kind of like, had that with him yeah, he like always, wakes yeah. up Woodstock he pulls the nest all the way back he pulls the branch <laughs> he back he flings him yeah. yeah and flings him yeah and then he's like what's wrong little birdie oh my little gosh little birdie I hear that and like my I first absolute honest main reaction is I was two years old once <laughs> <laughs> little tommy taylor was two years old once in i didn't know does vince garaldi ever sing other that's than that his, oh other than that yeah that's a good question yeah i, I feel know. like i have heard him sing on other albums but i'm not sure i've been listening to a lot a lot of them lately um i always i never can remember the how to pronounce the guy's voice he play he does that one with uh with Bola, the brazilian with uh, yeah bola yeah. sete or yeah, whatever Bola's it? Set, yeah yeah um and uh, that whole thing like the song i'm a loser uh nobody else they're these live versions it's just the two of them and they're just like magnificent they're incredible mm-hmm. no he's an yeah. absolutely incredible musician yeah and i'm looking at his house right now hey oh yeah. that's right yeah you grew up I keep forgetting that. my house that's yeah. crazy wow <laughs> I think my mom saw him live once. Oh, that'd be so great. Yeah. So now we've done every single Charlie Brown special ever, right? All three of them? No, there's a bunch. I didn't know. Were there always... No, there's a... a, There is a... Because when I finished this one, it said Charlie Brown New Year's special. No. I don't know if that's later. I don't know. There's there's like a Valentine's and... Oh, there's like Snoopy Come Home and stuff. There's a bunch of... Like they're, you know, it's like the Star Wars sequels. It's like, Happy New Year, Star Charlie Wars Brown, and then the Star Wars. 1986. Yeah, that's see, come we, on. That's why you don't know it. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it, Pete. Wait a minute. I, I feel like the, the Valentine's one, what year is that? That might be I, closer to these, maybe. That, that's a real one, isn't it? Oh, 75. Yeah, have, be My Valentine, Charlie Brown, 1975. Oh, maybe. Oh, wow. We got we'll that find out in out February. I'm sure we'll watch yeah. it. It's going <laughs> to be awesome. Not to talk about Dial of Destiny. <laughs> um, well, you said it, Pete. Should we tell people that we are? I mean, you know, we'll, you know, yeah, we're working on it. Get off us. Yeah, yeah. we're working on. It. We're no, I, I, it's we're been nice. It. It's it's been I've been I've, it's been nice to see in the uh, in the crusade. People have been saying, "Hey, when are you guys going to show up with Isle of Destiny?" We are, you know, it's 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 slow going, but we are actively working on it. And, we're and we doing it. Um, but thanks for listening, everybody. This has been awesome. And I, I you know, don't don't listen to us if if uh, all you do is absolutely love Thanksgiving. If you love it from top to bottom, please have a fantastic time. Uh, we don't mean to, to rain on your parade at all, even though, I don't know if we totally no, I, rained I, I on mean, Thanksgiving. I, I like we? raining I on know. people's parades. That's oh, okay. Pete wants yeah. to rain on your parade. <laughs> I'll say for no, myself. I, ho- I, I hope, hope you all have a have nice absolutely spectacular day, whatever yeah. you celebrate. At the very least, just have a nice time, whether that's yeah. by yourself or with people you love. And be grateful every day. Of course. Make every day, if not Thanksgiving, at least Wednesday or something. Or Saturday <laughs> evening. Oh, you're cool, supposed to nice. we're sp- supposed to be thankful that we're all together. We're thankful that we're all together, even if we're in three different states right now, and uh, all of you are God knows we're in, where. We're in two two different. You're all in two different states. Yeah. yeah. How come you guys never invite me to your state? How come I have to be all the way <laughs> over here in the Midwest? <laughs> you're the weird Schroeder. This is why I don't come for Thanksgiving anymore. <laughs>